Welcome once again to Pandora's Box. Like that little bass line there. You're listening to Pandora's Box on Aspen Weight Radio. You might also be listening to us on the YouTubes. If you're not listening to us on the YouTubes, go on YouTube, type in Pandora's Box Podcast, subscribe, check us out. You can learn about loads of stuff like Genghis Khan, cryptozoology, um, conspiracy theories, mm. other stuff in history, loads of crazy stuff. Science, yeah. Neuralink, mm. Elon Musk stuff, music, the world's your oyster, baby. Yeah. See us every single week, if you dare. <laughs> if you dare. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm your host as always, Mr. Callum Waiter is my name, in fact. Obadiah Penny Whistle. <laughs> Over mm. here we have Crochet. Ah, Crochet oh. Crop Top. Mr. Cro- Drew <laughs> Jameson Ben Armstrong. He is Capitano Longbottom. Ah. We in mean. the Dark Dale. He's also sometimes the wizard Schlieb in the Forest of Gleep. He's also a tech extraordinaire and part time <laughs> manager <laughs> yes, of course. the station. We yes. also have Mr. Nathaniel Warren. He is the host of the Rap Radar, which is on every Sunday night from 8 until 10 p.m. That's right. Hope everyone's having a good day wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Thanks for joining us again. We are going to be talking about a plethora mm. of interesting subjects. As usual this week. So, guys, how are we? I'm good. You good? I'm good. I'm doing well. I'm excited. I've got stuff to talk about. Mate, me too. We're going to have a good one today. Ooh. I feel it. I feel Ooh. it. Ooh. The vibes. Everyone's prepared. I can feel the vibes. Yeah, I feel like last week, I, I feel like I didn't bring much to the table. Um, oh. Just because I had Pulled like, out Brock Lesnar. Yeah. We had some backup Brock Lesnar. <laughs> oh, man. I always have out. some ba- bra- backup Brock Lesnar <laughs> facts. There's some other couple random obscure athletes as well that I could rant about oh, for ages. I'll, keep, I'll save them for another day. <laughs> I'll save them for another day. But yeah, it was just one of those times like last week, you know, like sometimes over the course of the week, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about this here or there, mm. or I'll make a plan. And also, sometimes it's not like that at all. We'll just like really organically get onto like a. A re- like a re- mm. so I think some of the most a interesting really juicy topics. Yes. Yeah, yes. Like I think mm. some of the most interesting like discussions we've had have been like completely off the cuff. Come naturally. I, I mm. really like the bits the where, way, where you don't know you don't know you know something until a topic comes up and then you remember something that you must have heard like mm. five years ago. And Apart like, from, oh. I normally butcher that because like I kept my memory so bad, so mm. I know I've heard something about it, but then I'm like, oh yeah, they said this and they heard the good, yeah. Ask you anything about like guitars or, or Bitcoin though. Yeah. And you're the man. Mm. You're the man. Hmm. Anybody wants to know anything about like pickups? Pickup rings. Guitars, <laughs> pickup rings. Mating calls. Mating calls. Oh, yeah. oh, turtle mating calls. Speci- uh, specifically. You did a fox one quite well. Fox impression. Did it, Drew, Drew do a fox one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just screamed. I just screamed and then ah. we actually listened to it and it actually sounded like that. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it, it's basically like a weird demonic screech, isn't Pretty it? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that, that's still turtle. No, that's still turtle. <laughs> that's just very excited turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Anything of note you guys... Oh, it was my birthday the other day. Oh, yeah, oh, Saturday. I'm 32 now. Yeah. Oh, we had man. a nice time on, on Old Saturday. Old man Johnny. Old man Johnny, they call me from now on. Yes. I am infinitely more powerful and wise than the last time I was mm. on Pandora's box now. Yes. Watched a bit of um, Highlander. Highlander. That was epic. There's Haven't seen that in years. There's time for us. Please, Heather. Heather, please. <laughs> oh, that was it. Yeah. Heather, please. Heather, please. He's just like laughing at him because yeah. Ramirez is kicking his ass in a sword <laughs> yeah. fight. And then he's like, Heather, please. <laughs> I heard you tried that new pizza place. Oh, oh yeah. Man, oh, the yeah. new pizza that place. That was good, wasn't it? I yeah. enjoyed that. Buffalo mozzarella. Mm, I had so the meathead. The what? Day. The meathead. The meathead? Yeah. Oh, you meaty boy. Yeah. It's a meathead. It's quite nice. <laughs> was it? I had a pepperoni. Okay. I couldn't believe it was only eight ninety nine for a big 12-inch pepperoni what? pizza. It's nice and cheap. I as really well. want to it's try because they do any pizza in a calzone, don't they? Mm. Mm. So I want to try that next time. Oh, um, calzone. They followed Could me on Instagram. Huh? They followed me on Instagram. Did they? Because mm. yeah. you're big time, man. I am. I am a local celebrity. Big time. Um, host of the Rat Radar. On uh, yeah, Radio. exactly. I can't. I can't even leave my house without being stopped nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that the one from Pandora's Box? Mm. Yeah, man. The one who sits 
Just with something behind him. Is that the one from Pandora's Box slash Jimmy O'Malley? Is that Bullwinkle? Is that actually Is that that Bullwinkle? Is that actually (laughs) the famous Bullwinkle? I went to the shop the other day and they they wouldn't serve me because. You didn't get your winter off. Yeah, it's because what it's, they didn't agree with my winter take a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, mate, I don't, I don't blame <laughs> them. To be honest, I, I wouldn't have served you either. I wouldn't have served you either. <laughs> Dear so me. before I start going off on tangents about stuff, is there anything that either of you want to talk about this week? I do. Yeah, I do. I'm glad you've asked. I'm glad you've asked. I've got a couple of notes up. You're welcome. So you I, don't wanna, wanna, I don't want to butcher my story. Uh, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, this week. Yeah. So originally, Hit I me. saw someone who was on TikTok. And he's 180 days mm. into a uh, experiment slash challenge that he's doing where he crawls around on all fours. What? what so he can't, he's not going to let what? himself walk. Well, he does walk, but he's, I, I, I think he must walk. I think it must just be like a training thing he does every day for like an hour or something. Ah. But he's got to a point now where he can like jump on his arms. So what? when you say training, it's crazy. he's doing it for the purpose of getting really efficient at walking on all fours. I, su- I suppose he just thought it'd be funny to... I don't know why he started the challenge, mm. but obviously I just saw I saw like he was on his 180th day. Mm. And I was like, this guy's like running around on his arms. What, so like he's, he's gotten to a point where he's not even used his legs. He's just like crawling around on his arms. Mm, that's, that's cool. Crazy, yeah. That's cool. That's a bit freaky. Like but proper it's gorilla. Tics. Yeah, yeah. That's proper cool, man. And then... While I was trying to find what the guy's TikTok name was, which I did find, um, I found another story on Austra- 60 Minutes Australia. Um, right. Yeah. Basically, there was this family uh, that they found where they had 18 children. Mm. Uh, 12 of the children were healthy and six of them just walk on all fours. Mm. And like they've always done it. I saw a documentary. I don't know what? if it's about the same family. Right. But it was proper weird, and yet everyone just walked on all fours. Mm. And they're like, they were ri- their, their asses was like pointing, like real pointy up in the air, and they just kind of like l- lumbered around. So on feet, but they were feet fast. and hands, feet and feet hands, and hands yes. but just like really fast. And yeah, it was like a load of them in the. Family. I would almost so it might like, have been the same. As, 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 like, as yeah. like a normal bipedal man, mm. you'd think that to me, it almost like, I think that like after a while, it would like hurt your lower back a little bit. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? You imagine being in yeah, that angle. I guess time. if you've like always done it, it, yeah. m- it must. Yeah, just yeah. No, they grew differently. Yeah, These people exactly. looked weird. Yeah, yeah, that's they, look, they looked like all like crooked you'd, you'd and have stuff. To, and you? it was like, and it was a, like, and I remember their arms would be like quite straight, and mm. it'd be like, and they, and it'd be like that, like how they. These go people on, like and walk on their palm, like really, like, like big and callous. Yeah. These ah, people yeah. like walk on their palm, uh, not on like. So you'd think like if you were gonna like walk, you'd almost do a bit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they literally just like press down on their palm. So right. pro- proper like, but apparently their skin's palms. like really hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you well, you would end up like, well, like the, 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 yeah. The soles of your feet are obviously like, yeah. the skin gets very thick, doesn't mm. it? Especially mm. by the time you're like you're like fully grown. Mm. You know. So the guy who was doing the research on it was a professor called Professor Nick Humphrey. Oh yeah. And he was saying that one of the people could out sprint him by like crawling. Mm. Oh, one of the people could out sprint the right. Yeah, right. Like, that's uh, how quick he right. was. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Just crawling around. I thought that was pretty crazy. But um, it, it got a bit sad after a while, to be honest, this really? documentary. Yeah. So it turned out that the reason that it was was because their parents are like second cousins. Right. So they reckon there's just like a genetic problem. And then mm. they, they did like a brain scan and found there was like a certain part of the brain, the cerebellum, I right. believe, yep. that was damaged. Uh, still didn't really make sense because obviously people don't have their cerebellum and can still walk. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, just just little things like that. Their, their skeletons, like Drew said, have, are different, obviously, Deformed. just from well, yeah, well, I mean, evolution it's, it's, of being it's, crawling around. It's no different in that regard than, obviously, those ancient Mayan skulls where they would, like, constrict them, and nowadays they look like weird alien skulls. Mm. Or you also have, um, you know, there's in, in certain African cultures... Wait, you mean they're not aliens? But they might be aliens. Mm. I thought mm. either that, <laughs> or that. Yeah, but they used to like bite, they used to like bind the baby yeah, skulls, bind the heads, yeah. And then, and then as a result, there's. Have you not seen those skulls? No. There's like those Mayan skulls, and they like, they look like alien skulls, man. So, some they of them to, like, look bind really the yeah. long, though. Oh, some wow. some of the skulls look really long. Yeah, so they're the ones that I think they look are, a bit creepy. Yeah. So like for anybody, if anyone's like listening, um, and they haven't seen what I'm on about, type in like um like something like Mayan skulls or or like um deformed Mayan skulls or something like that and they would mm. like purposely deform the skulls they would ra- I'm pretty yeah. sure from like the babies they would wrap they would bind their skulls mm. so that they would like they wouldn't grow in a normal way mm. and they'd almost have to grow 
like elongated rather mm. than out yeah. like if you know what I mean they yeah, do yeah, it a yeah. lot in different cultures so in, in Africa they would do it uh, with their with their necks have yeah. you ever seen the uh, yeah. the women with like the really long legs mm. every yeah. I've seen yeah. that yeah. Yeah. they, get, they get a ring. ring and it makes them like really un- elongated they do necks. like lip plates and stuff as well yeah, yeah and like in their ears and in their lips and stuff but like mm. um, it's weird because by the time obviously a woman's like 30 they have like 30 rings yeah and like if they ever took them off they've got like weirdly yeah. long necks mm. and, and obviously in China the, they, they just call it binding Mm. and it's the feet and this that was like, oh that's horrible because that, that's and like, they, like they yeah they crack from a from a young baby they'll wrap the feet so tight that like they it'll go into like you know like little balls on like the these feet, tiny um, little shoes and your and your uh, and your feet foot actually breaks oh, i don't stuff. yeah i don't know if it's like all china and even to this day or if it's just certain areas of oh, yeah, I but think it's one of those traditions that they have yeah like, it's considered all, desirable like, or, or to have small to have mm. really small feet, yeah. It so like it's delicate. Like and they feminine. will literally right. squeeze their feet into like almost what would seem to us as like abnormally small shoes. Yeah. Yeah. But as a result, they're in pain like all oh, the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a million because their feet are d- completely deformed. Mm. Um, they can't and walk on their feet well. now not, without being not, in pain. It's not blokes. It's um, no, it's just, just women. For women. Yeah. It's just like oh, one of those that's weird things. Like, oh, it is weird, isn't it? This um, just just to finish off my story, um. The it did have a happy ending, right? It did have a happy ending. Happy so ending. they started giving them like a walk frame to use, and um, and they put out like parallel lines or parallel like, metal poles all down their house and around right. their gardens and stuff, so that they could walk. And then they went back like a year later, but they were all saying like all the scientists and everything were saying that the oldest guy, the guy that could like sprint and everything, yeah, it's probably too late for him. Wolfman, like mm. he he. He most likely wasn't ever going to be able to walk, and he'd been like he he was getting like beaten so up by all the local kids. He physically couldn't stand up on two feet. Yeah. Whoa, that's mm. crazy. It's and weird. it was it was literally just because like from a child he'd been like crawling, and his parents never like got him to really stand up. Like he never got assigned like a walking frame. Like mm. there's no like real hospitals or anything out there or so medical just advice. Anatomically, just has just lost the ability to obvious, walk. Yeah, he could obviously sprint, like. Though. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that would look as freaky, a man. Yeah, as a child, um, <laughs> or as a baby, like babies just crawl around, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just kind of developed. Yeah, but they do it on, the ne- on their knees, don't they? Yeah. So they were just saying the next step was like to doing the it feet. with their feet. <laughs> yeah. But it's um, really weird. Do they look like they were like always doing like a downward dog when they were? Um, yeah. yeah, like the yoga yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon yeah. this is the same documentary that I saw years ago. Probably. And I can just like, remember it, but it looks really weird because yeah, you know, like the downward dog is almost like a mm-hmm. triangle. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. these people Don't look like they're, they're all, they look like they're always just like walking around on in a triangle. Mm. Like it's pro- it's pro- that's you know, why you I imagine said. it in your head. It's like it's not like an an like animal where it's like four legs and then you've got a long yeah. back. Mm. It's like just like a that's, triangle. That's why I said like, to me, it almost like feels like it would hurt my back. Yeah. For a while, like mm. it'd be okay for a while, and then after a couple of minutes, I could imagine it right like, at my oh, lower right, back, yeah, almost yeah. like where my Millions spine sense. meets my mm. hip. I could imagine it just almost start getting a bit achy. Mm. Well, we're not built for it. We're we not meant to be quadrupedal. No, not well, quadrupedal. Are we called uh, bipedal. 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 Yeah. Obviously, I always bi- knew I was bipedal. Two. So we walk on two legs. We are bipedal. I liked it yes. when you cracked that word out earlier. I was like, oh, oh bipedal, man. <laughs> and bipedal. obviously, and if you walk on all fours, you are quadrupedal. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, yeah. Quadru- quadruped. But, um, yeah, quadrupeds. Yeah, yeah, that's what I Yeah, quadrupeds. Yeah. Yeah, so this story had a happy ending. They went back, and the woman were like walking better, <laughs> and the guy was walking. Uh, was he? he did. He managed to do it. Yeah. He managed to do it. But he was like, "Hi, my name's Jeffrey, and now I don't understand why I was walking on all fours all those years." <laughs> I always knew I wasn't a card to play it. <laughs> what the hell was I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what accent. <laughs> hey, I don't know. Whatever accent oh, they hey, Whatever master. accent they speak in that little part of the world, son. <laughs> Yes. Well, hey, see? Out back in the wetneck here we are. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Just suddenly like yeah, changing it a bit. <laughs> yeah, man. But do you know what this made me think when we were talking about all of that stuff then? Doesn't that just show um, that's like a really good um, example of evolution? Mm. Mm. That's what that's I, what was, I was thinking. thinking. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. We're on a wavelength. So like, obviously the uh, evolution occurs. So let's take let's take whales for example. So let's take cetaceans. Cetaceans are just dolphins and whales. Um, they started off a long time ago. They had a common ancestor. Well, they would have had an ancestor with us. Obviously, going back far enough. Obviously, all mammals have a common ancestor. But the last before they were fully aquatic, they the animal that they evolved from looked quite similar to what is like a modern day hippo 
Mm. So it had a so it had like a oh. semi a semi aquatic <laughs> lifestyle. So um, an a hippo would have like what you would call a semi aquatic lifestyle. Right. So it spends some time on land and sometimes mm. in the sea or in water. So mm. you know it makes sense. Um, obviously, a whale now is fully aquatic. They've completely lost the ability to survive on land. Obviously, that also and then lots One of terrestrial animals are completely far the opposite way. They could not survive in mm. water. Yeah. There but they but they do um, need oxygen. As in, like they can't take oxygen like fish. They no. still need to get right they need, up they, to the top yeah. and, and it, breathe air. Yeah, they mm. breathe. They have to surface to breathe air, and they've become extremely efficient at holding breaths. Um, and obviously, you know, that's like even with humans. That's remember, so crazy, isn't it? When you think about it, like before I knew that about whales and and um, the Dolphins, such, yeah. um, I thought they could just breathe underwater. Yeah. Yeah, like, and it's weird because that... it's funny. It's almost like the same, like it's exactly the same with us. So, like we can swim underwater as long as we can get back to the surface to breathe. Now, mm-hmm. it only makes mm-hmm. sense. Now, imagine if you were doing that. Imagine if humans just decided that we were going to live like that, and then two million years in the future, our descendants would obviously have became way more efficient than us. Mm-hmm. And we were talking a bit about like how we used to do this with our dads and stuff when we were younger on a, sh- a couple of shows mm-hmm. back about how mm-hmm. literally, I, re- I I remember going on holiday with my old man. And hold my breath as long as I could. And I think the first time I did it was something like 30 seconds. By the time I'd gone home, I'd added something like 15 seconds onto yeah. how long I could. So that mm. was just a week. Yeah. Now imagine like 2 million years worth mm. of, of doing that. For sure. You know? Um, but where was I going with my original point? Yeah. So if you take like whales, for example. So they started off as almost like a hippo like creature. And then they spent more and more time in the water. So as, as the hundreds and then thousands and then millions of years went by they became more and more and more adapted just for the water. Mm. So at first, their limbs went from, like, hippo-like, weird little, like, you know, stubby legs to becoming more, like, still, like, still had digits, but were, like, more, you know, um, I guess almost probably, like, imagine what, like, a crocodiles are like. Mm. Like, they're not fins, but mm. they are very good mm. for sort of going through the water. And then with time, they evolved even more to have flippers. But what's really interesting is if you looked at the skeleton of a whale... Just like, looks like a hand. just like us, mm. they still have like what would look like essentially four fingers and a thumb. Yeah. I think that with birds as well. Have you ever looked at birds' wings? Like, like, like if you look at birds' wings, mm. um, they they are they're like their hands, their arms, their the, the oh, birds' yeah, yeah, wings yeah, yeah, yeah. are like their arms, so, and mm. you can see the fingers like yeah. like like going out in the wing. Mm. Yeah, so, so it's they, just like they would, they would fingers. That's very simple. They would be quite different. It would be a little bit different than like the whales in terms of the fact that one of the things that's almost like crazy about whales and you think about with any mammals is how similar we are to all mammals in terms of the fact that yeah you look at the skeleton of like a tiger you look at the skeleton of like a bear or a dog or a whale or us because we're all mammals or like a mouse Mm. you can see how intensely similar we are in terms of like our organs are Mm. are roughly in the same Mm. place Mm. you know you can see almost like the digits and stuff now obviously we are very similar to birds if you go back far enough obviously we are related to birds you'd have to go back a very long a long way um birds evolved from reptiles and obviously reptiles the reptiles they evolved from would have had Mm. digits Mm. you know like if you think of like a lizard or thinking about a dinosaur, mm. they would have in some way had like feet mm-hmm. with like, you know, bones obviously in the feet. They might have not had the same amount of digits as us or something like that. So it mm. might have been a bit different in that regard. But they would have had like digits in their feet um, and digits in their hands. Whether it was like T-Rex with just two, he evolved to have two. But most dinosaurs had at least three or mm. maybe four in some cases. But um, stuff like that is amazing. Yeah, obviously just getting back to my original point. All I was saying is like, so... Whales are a good example, or cetaceans, dolphins as well, of of um, things that they've just adapted through something that they do regularly to become super specialist at something. To the point where nowadays, really, they rule the oceans. Mm. We've talked about on Pandora's befo- box before about how like nothing messes with a killer whale. They're like mm. the apex mm. predator mm. Mm. because they're like one on one. A killer whale is more say deadly than a great white anyway they're about 10 feet longer on average maybe more in some cases it's not that uncommon for a, for a killer whale to be 30 feet long whereas it's extremely rare for a great white to be 20 feet long for example mm. then you add on the fact that they are ridiculously more intelligent mm. um, and they are also pack hunters yeah like i mean it's like it's like expecting like a 10 year old to beat up 10 16 year olds yeah Do you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah even yeah. if you're even if you're a really savage vicious 10 year old who's really a hard little kid for your age mm-hmm. 10 really smart 16 year olds come along and just want to kick your ass they are going to kick your ass but yeah no it's just uh, made me think about um how cool evolution is in terms of like you know with those guys mm. that just became so you know like 
that guy on all fours that was you said that could out, outrun mm. a man on two feet mm. the interviewer that said he was like raced that you know and like that is madness mm. yeah but that's just such a good um that's just almost like a good example of evolution of adaptability in terms of like you just yeah. do something you get good at it and then if your offspring do that as well and carry on the trend and then their offspring mm. before you know it evolution is in is in swing and I thought, uh, like a million years down the line, if there were like a big enough community of people that were living like that, we'd have a whole new subspecies of humankind, mm. yeah. and it'd all be these weird quadrupeds. Well, that's what I find be, interesting you know about. I mean? That's what I Meta. find interesting about this guy who's crawling around for this thing. Uh, is his at is XP movement? What's uh, that mean? XP. Just, just his like name. <laughs> uh, oh, right. His name on um on TikTok, but um. He was showing off his forearms and everything, and they just look crazy. Well, like really muscle it. Yeah, really. Yeah, just from doing this challenge, like the fact to be able to jump around just on two hands and like walk around on two hands is crazy. And mm. he's only been doing this for 180 days. Like you said, imagine doing this for like a thousand years. Well, mm. luckily, actually, I can almost like f- figure out why this would be um, through my knowledge of exercise. Mm. So your forearms basically have like two main functions. You have your forearm extensors. Ooh. <laughs> the forearm extensors, which are like the muscles on top of your forearm, and then you've got your forearm flexors, which are the muscles underneath your forearm, underneath it, sort of running along from your palm to your elbow. And your flexors are responsible for any, anything that involves this, and extensors are anything that involves an upward motion. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense if you were like this, and imagine pushing up, well, then you're like tensing your forearm flexor quite um, intensively. Mm. And if that's with your whole body weight. Mm. Or at least a large portion of it, because yeah, obviously your sure. feet are going to be taking summer strain. Mm. But I mean, that's a lot to be doing that like your whole entire life. Think it's almost like you ever seen like um, weightlifters or bodybuilders with like a barbell curl, sort of like mm. almost doing like wrist curls. They're obviously, the idea of that is that you're trying to like develop your flexors, or you could do it the other way to develop your extensor. Like it's not surprising why they'd have because you're mm. you're pushing off like that constantly. Yeah, for sure. It's almost like you're just constantly doing like a, a forearm workout. Mm. And it's, it's like, question. Oh, oh sorry, man. go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> like it's it's crazy. Um, you think of it on an evolution scale and those things over time, mm. but just like what we can do in our everyday life, like in a shorter period of time, that mm. have like these massive differences, like this mm. guy with his forearms and everything, and mm. just that like that adaptability that we have, it's just like crazy, isn't it? Mm. Like yeah divers who can hold their breath for longer and everything it's like you do anything for over an extended period of time enough then your body will just adapt to it Weight li- so weightlifting is cool. a really good easy example of that just because it's it's so visual mm. Do you know what I mean like a lot of adaptations are hard to notice until that's in, until sort of like you'd see somebody doing a specific task weightlifting is a really easy example of that though just purely because you see, can physically see such obvious yeah. results in terms mm. of like if you lift weights basically what your body is sending your brain is a stimulus saying like okay i'm doing this now so i need to get better at doing it so your brain then diverts resources to make sure that that muscle can get bigger and stronger to make it more efficient at doing the task because your body is very simple in in the way that like if you just do something enough mm. it will send signals to your brain to saying i need to get better <laughs> at this please and your brain will then make that happen okay <laughs> yeah 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 basically so it's like you you know you, you you do curls all the time the, the muscle that's responsible for you doing curls is like your bicep and also your forearm a little bit but also but mainly your, your bicep and also a little bit your anterior deltoid but mainly your bicep um you do that your bicep's just gonna get big you know you mm. do that you do it you do that like every day you do like you know just four sets of, of barbell curls like pretty much like intensely every mm. single day in like two or three months time people will start commenting on how big your biceps are looking Jack- you know what i mean yeah <laughs> pretty, pretty much you know Bring what I mean? it, bringing it back one last time just to this guy that's yeah. crawling around i questioned whether it was de-evolution because obviously as de-evolution. a species devolution yes uh obviously <laughs> as a as a species yes yeah, an astute observation my friend <laughs> <laughs> yes that is what he said yes. um, what, what? <laughs> as a species we obviously have evolved to become bipedal yeah. for a reason. Yeah. But at the same mm. time, you're looking at this guy mm. and he's able to, you know, run around on his arms. Like he's clearly a lot stronger Pros just and from it. Yeah. You you wonder if if maybe it's time to go back. Well, the, the the downside of that though is like, what can we do as a result of being bipedal? What 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 have we got the ability to do? Mm. What's, what's the benefit of being by Tidal? No, 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 but like in terms of like what does it free up for us to use? Our hands. Our hands. Ah, so, yes. like, say if you're we a. We create. Oh, yes. A lion is an, a deadly, amazing predator, mm. but a lion can't. can't carve a 
Mm. No, <laughs> he can't carve a chair with hand tools mm. out, of a, out of a blog. Yeah, and he can't point a gun at you yeah, and yeah, shoot yeah. you if you manage to get away from him. And he can't drive a car and he can't hold an iPad mm. or work a computer because he constantly needs to use these to get around. Mm. Yeah, so like and like dogs and everything, it's like everything becomes about your mouth. Mm. Like I mean, wh- you look at all of yeah. these animals that yeah. walk around, it's just everything they do that's any kind of interaction and it's any kind of like yeah. doing mm. anything to the world is with their mouth. Yeah, by they, biting something, yeah. by licking something, yeah, by sure. like they you know bite what I mean? to like, like figure out what something yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they, they sniggle the nose, like we can move pick it up things and look around. around. Yeah, it's but, like your dog Rupert the other day when he was playing around and. It, like you know, he was like sat on my lap, wriggling around and stuff. And he was like, he was like biting me, but like not in like in an aggressive way. I could tell it was just almost like that was his. He was like playing, communicating, mm. you yeah. know. Mm. So I was just sort of rubbing his face back and that, and then he would like sort of like bite me, you know, like gently and sort of like be like, you know what I mean? But it was like mm. that was because he hasn't got hands and he yeah. doesn't know how to use them like me. So I was He's like, like he I want to interact with you in some way, but to, yeah, this, this is my way of doing it. He <laughs> needs to interact with me as much as I was interacting with him. Mm. And because what dogs are like, especially something like a spaniel, they are so they love the interaction. Yeah, and it's it's also like what they say about like most shark attacks aren't um, necessarily even because they they want to prey on us. It's either it's either because they they are misidentifying us, but often what it is is because they don't have like arms to like pick up something and check it out. Mm. Their only way of doing it is to like bite, mm. and mm. because they they don't have the capacity to like think about what they're doing is like potentially devastating to somebody. Do you know what I mean they they just don't think like that? So yeah. they're just like, I need to figure out what this is. So I'm just going to bite it, and then I'm going to find out from like the taste, how it feels in my mouth, everything. Unfortunately for us, that could be potentially fatal, or like mm. make you lose your leg or something. But obviously, mm. but they're not necessarily intending to mm. hurt us. It's just a byproduct of sure. it. You know, it's just a byproduct. Like even like the other day we were saying about Rupert. Like if you were like a little old brittle ninety eight year old. Then some of the ways that Rupert would bite me might have—they might have been uncomfortable. Mm. But obviously, to me, it just wasn't really a, an mm. issue. And I'm like, I like a bit of rough play anyway. Bit of rough and tumble, baby. Mm. But um, you know, <laughs> you know mm. um, but yeah, it's just their way of figuring things out, isn't it? Mm. So, as a humans, one of the reasons why apes could even start the Stone Age—they would have never started the Stone Age when they were still living in trees and using their arms way more—is because it just got to the point where when you start walking up upright, it's almost like naturally, then suddenly. Uh, like a bear comes and attacks you, it's almost like on instinct one day, I expect one of them just picked up a rock and just threw it at the bear. Mm. And then you're like, oh, mm. that was actually really effective. Mm-hmm. That's way better than actually waiting until it's like in my face and then trying to like hit it. Mm. Mm. I could just pick up like a really big heavy rock, which is way harder than my hands and just throw it at its face. Mm. You know, and then the next thing, you know, it evolves like, oh, well, why don't we, we could pick up a spear and then throw that. Mm. You know, or then, well, let's put and a bit of intelligence comes. Let's into sharpen it and you a think bit of stone and then put it at the end of that spear and yeah. then throw that. And when, they're, and when they're, and when they're, um, they have the sun in their eyes, then they can't see you either. So then you can start. Do you know what I mean? Like that was a that was a huge thing for like hunting. Mm. Um, yeah, the 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 first bit of technology is like oh. the torpedo in the hand. So like yeah, yeah like a stone or projectile. Mm. Yeah, um, and then it's realizing that if you're um, if you're away from the wind, then they mm. can't smell you, mm. and if if they if the sun is facing their eyes they can't see you doing it so ah, you'll stand yeah. with the sun and then choke uh, the thing and up, it, yeah so what's it so not, not um, upstream but up, like <laughs> up, upwind you need to be upwind yeah, you need to be upwind and with the yeah. sun behind you mm. i knew you know i know a lot I mean? about being upwind because i, I watched um like steve Rinella, who's like a really good hunter i know i talked to him about about him a bit before on the, on the show but steve Rinella is a really good hunter i watched some really interesting um like videos of him and like episodes of his sh- show with him where he talks obviously a lot about how the importance it makes you realize and appreciate the animals so much because mm. if he is upwind of them they just don't know he's there and then it's almost like if the wind changes boom they like yeah, turn their heads and then whiff. they just sprint like, off whoa that's and do you know what I mean there. as a human you are just not going to catch up with like a freaking yeah. like g- elk, elk. Yeah, yeah 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 or something like that if it like tanks it over the freaking mountain and you're looking at like a three hour hike then just to get over that the yeah, other side just of that to mountain. get a whiff of it again yeah. Yeah. anyway I'm loving the chat so far we're going to listen to a couple tracks now when we come back we're just going to carry on with all this madness I'm absolutely loving this tune at the moment this is um, Speed of the Night Time by The Darkness this is so 80s loving it you're having a good day, guys. Hope you're enjoying the factoids so far. We got plenty more coming your way. That was Percolate by Lady Al. Before that, we had Speed of the Night Time by The Darkness. Absolutely loving um, The Darkness' latest album, Motorheart. Such a good album. Um, so we're definitely going to be playing a lot of that. Have been playing a lot of that recently, anyway. But going to continue playing on more of that. Um, on Friday on the Dark Day, I'm going to play some tracks off Motorheart that we haven't played on Aspen Radio at all. 
as of yet. So tune into the Dark Dale Friday, eight your turn to check that out. Guys, you are currently listening to Pandora's Box, and I'm your host as always. Obadiah Petty, so. Stay in the studio with me. We have Crochet. This is your Hello. Intro. I realised I didn't even give you your yeah, nickname, Yeah, I was going to say, I was waiting for my name. Yours is Stitches. 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 Oh, I like that. And over here we have Stitches. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise known as, yeah, you're boggly. <laughs> we have Stitches, a.k.a. Mr. Nathaniel Warren, host of the Rap Raider. I like um, hope you guys are having a good day. Cheers for chilling with us. We've been talking all about crazy people running around on their all fours, but getting <laughs> ridiculously good at it to the point where one of the guys could outrun a man on two feet. Mm-hmm. We also then sort of went branched off and I was saying how that reminds me of just evolution in general. You know, how you just, you do something enough, you end up specialising in it, you start adapt, adapting in that way. I was using sort of cetaceans, whales and dolphins as an example of how the, the, their um, ancestor, if you go back far enough, was sort of like a semi-aquatic animal, quite similar to like a hippo, but they just became more and more specious in the water, spent more and more time in the water, evolved over millions of years into what we now see as whales, you know, which is like, you know, look at a whale now. It doesn't look anything like a hippo, really. Um, so yeah, just interesting stuff. Mm. Are you saying you want to do this little challenge yourself and become a little crazy four-legged <sighs> I man? I do kind of want to try it. Yeah? I'll be like a human guinea pig. Imagine I know there's, there's like a... a quadruped. Imagine if you've got, like, jacked forearms. <laughs> yeah, mm. and just coming to beat everyone up. Yeah, just come in and be like, <laughs> Captain Neckbeard, what? <laughs> yeah, Slap yeah. yeah. Slap me if you're calling Captain Neckbeard. I think there's, like, a less um, brutal challenge right. where it's like every you do it for 30 eat, days eat a cream egg every day for 30 days <laughs> 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 you do it for every days uh but then every day you add like another minute of walking or so another minute of like walking on your arms or something like that so okay maybe i'll try so that it's good exercise. Just, yeah. so it's just walking on your arms it's well walking it's, it's on walking on all fours, fours but i think oh, you oh, as yeah as you get progress through it you want to try and see what you can do Guaranteed. your stabilizer muscles would obviously have to get very strong before you could just do it on your arms because oh, yeah, million percent. the idea that you would be able to support your entire body weight at like an a weird angle just on your arms that's very mm. impressive because mm. obviously if you do like a handstand that's more sort of balanced than straight mm. up strength mm. isn't it obviously you have to be strong but it's more balanced it's, i would yeah, say yeah yeah i'll um, have to figure out what the challenge is and then I'm making no promises, but I'll try and give it a go. I'll yeah, try man. and give it a go. I mean, cool. It made me think about, because what we were saying about, um, well, what you were saying about how they all had, like, massively developed forearms. Like, have you ever, like, looked at, like, a, a picture of, like, a lion's forearms? You know what I was obviously saying about, like, what the roles of your forearm muscles are? Your extensor, which is what brings your, your hand up, and then your flexor, which brings your hand down. Like, obviously, the way I was explaining it, and then it made me think about it afterwards, like, put two and two together, like... Obviously, lions have to za- have to do exactly the same thing. Mm. They're like pushing off, and they're like massive and heavy beasts. I think lions can weigh up to like three hundred kilos. I want to say off the top of my head, maybe a bit lower, but that's mm. that's ridiculously heavy, isn't it? Mm. Yes, it's like three times heavier than me. <laughs> um, that's a big old mammal. Um, but yeah, if, that, if you like, check out some pictures of lions just like chilling out and resting, and it's almost like weird in a way because it makes you realize like how similar, like they look almost like human forearms, mm. but just ridiculously jacked human forearms. Mm. They're like proper. Proper muscular arms, lions. You know, it's like really cool. Um, but yeah, I was like, I was um, doing some research. You know, one of my sort of like passions um, has always sort of been like, sort of in general fitness. I definitely prefer like the strength and conditioning side of things. So I've always like loved lifting weights and stuff and calisthenics. But um, I like all sorts really. Um, I'm interested in fitness as a whole and nutrition. But, um, I was watching a podcast recently and then ended up doing a load of research on top of that, like reading some meta-analyses and different studies and stuff. And I found some proper interesting information. Um, I didn't realize it was quite to this extent. I mean, obviously, everybody knows if you work out and if you have a good diet and stuff that you're going to live longer and be healthier than if you don't. And that's Mm -hmm. almost just like a given. But I didn't realize actually, and now it's almost like I'm almost like more passionate about the benefits of exercise than ever. Um, so let me just like sort of like start off by like saying so like most people know that um, obviously if you like smoke, um, that's that's like a really really obviously like bad for your health. So you can increase all cause mortality. Um, so that basically means like death by any number of health variables mm. by two to three times by smoking. Okay? Right. Okay. So which is like which is a hell of a lot, isn't it? Mm. Two hundred to three hundred percent. You know, all cause mortality rate will increase two mm. to three times from smoking. Um, being diabetic, being diabetic is also in about the same bracket. So if you end up unfortunate enough to become diabetic, you're about two. You know, your all cause mortality rate will raise about two or three times. Mm. Um, all cause mortality rates, yeah, rise about two or three times for diabetic people. Um, what I didn't know was quite as extreme as this um, was that 
if you are in the top 2.5 percent of fitness in, in in the human population and if you were in the top 2.5 percent of fit people um or people in general you know from the whole spectrum you your all-cause mortality goes down five times mm. five times so i just think that's like an amazing figure so that so with that with you could so you could smoke you could smoke regularly and as long as you were working out optimally <laughs> you could still your all cause mortality would still be 2.5 percent better than somebody that didn't work out <laughs> at all or smoke mm, mm. i think, Crazy, that's, a, I think that's a great mm. statistic don't you think um and apparently as well even just like what you is considered like um a decent level of fitness like average fitness you could still improve improve your all cause mortality rate by about three times mm. Mm. that's that's a hell of a lot isn't it so like you know heart disease um you know anything like stroke cancer anything like that you can reduce it three times just by being considered what is averagely fit and apparently what that falls under is if you did if you did a cardiovascular workout three times a week for 30 minutes and then just did some strength work on top of that that would be that you would fall under that and then you would you would be essentially three times healthier and have you know three times the potential to not get anything mm. like a serious life life condition that would end up causing you to die essentially mm. i need to do more than just walking my dog every day yeah <laughs> but another thing that made me think of as well is that like it sounds like um daunting when you think like oh okay well to be like five to, you know to be like five times healthier i'd have to be in the t- top 2.5 percent of people mm. in terms that of fitness. Ain't happening that does <laughs> seem like quite daunting but then when you think about it all that means is for every 100 people which isn't actually that much really all you have to that then all you need to do is, is be like one of the the two or three fittest out of that 100 people mm. which actually when you think of it like that all of a sudden isn't actually that daunting mm. i don't think it is because obviously <laughs> i think the most exercise i've done in a month is like driving to work <laughs> <laughs> just like your arm just like moving the steering yeah i think yeah. it's a lot more um to to be in the average category but still gain three times oh yeah um, the amount like if it's to the, the average seems a lot more um you Achieve- know, oh, oh, oh achiev- obviously it's achievable, way more achievable which, which is crazy that it's still got three times yeah uh when when the highest the hardest thing to achieve is five times so it's that yeah so what we were saying more, about but- how um smoking can increase your basically your chance of of death or serious illness by two to three times so if if um just being considered averagely fit and like working out you know three times a week with both cardio and strength training um that could basically cancel out all the negative effects of smoking basically so that's crazy does it think, work like that i'm well uh, it, it would seem to me like it does like if, if, basi- yeah. if basically smoking would increase your chance yeah. of having serious illness by two to three times and then working out would then lower it by three times mm. then it's sort of cancelling each other out isn't mm. it obviously i think that it would be fair to say still that your chances of getting something like cancer or something mm. would still be yeah it's like the effects of that yeah yeah do you know what i mean of just having smoke on your lungs <laughs> yeah mm. wait we're gonna listen to another track now this is hero of the day stick around babies when we come back i'm gonna carry on this conversation let's get fit everyone get pumping <laughs> Do you want to be the hero of the day? Do you? And break me with a dumbbell. All right. That was Leg of Time by Bill Bailey. Before that, we had Scars by Black Label Society. A nice little song, that. Every scar that Before that, we had Hero of the Day by Metallica. You are listening to Pandora's Box on Aspermate Radio. You might also be watching us on the tubes, if so. I am Obadiah Penny Whistle. This is Mr. Drew Armstrong, but today he is Crochet. Crochet, baby. And this is Mr. Nathaniel Warren, but today he is Stitches. Stitches. That reminds me it reminds me of something like from Home Alone. Hey Stitches. Hey Snakes. Hey Stitches. stitches. (laughs) I was just talking about how all the latest research on um working out shows that working out is basically more beneficial than ever so i was saying all the latest um, research shows that um if you are in the top 2.5 percent of fitness then your all-cause mortality rates go down by five times can go mm. down by five times and if you are just considered a- like averagely fit and that just means doing working out cardio in your, your cardiovascular system for 30 minutes three times a week and on top of that just doing some strength training 
And um, apparently that doesn't mean you have to do like crazy squats or deadlifts or anything like that. Mm. Apparently that means things like um, apparently the most beneficial ways of, of sort of like staying healthy in terms of your strength in a very non-strenuous way are doing things like dead hangs. So like, you know, just like hanging from a chin-up bar. I've heard that, mm. how how good that is for you to stretch out your back well, and your shoulders and, and everything. It incre- oh. And it improves mm. your grip strength mm. insanely because your grip strength has to be so strong to just hold your body weight mm. on a bar. Um, and your grip strength day to day is probably the most beneficial thing mm. in terms of mm. like, Carrying in stuff. those jars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> but serious. Yeah. yeah. Open it. Like, think if you were like a little old lady widow, widow, widower, yeah. widower, mm. well, widow, widow, if you're a woman, isn't it? Um, and like, you know, you're like, you know, you've got um, rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. You know, your husband, Frank, unfortunately passed away 10 years ago. And you've got like an extra tight jar of pickles you're trying to open. Then, mm. you know, you say you're like, you know, you're, you've got some children, but they live in. Woking and you mm. live in Norwich, mm. just hang you know. from a bar. You know, then yeah, you know, it's, it's a, you just gonna <laughs> hang from that bar. You're just, you're just gonna yeah. give up. You're just gonna give yeah. up, aren't you? Yeah. But yeah, if you start doing some <laughs> dead hangs, <laughs> Ethel will be in as many pickles as she damn likes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I heard um, Joe Rogan talking about it and saying like he had like problems with his back or something, mm-hmm. but like um, started doing all of these dead hangs, hangs yeah. and it just improved all of like neck and mm. back problems and stuff. Well, one of the re- one of the things that, that one of the reasons why. I I think that probably is. It's because um, have you guys heard like the term like s- slipping a disc? Mm-hmm. For example, yeah. that's actually like a bit of a misnomer. You don't you don't really slip a disc. Um, your discs actually are like little sponges, right? And they contain fluid. And what happens oftentimes with like people that lift lots and lots of weights, like heavy weights, do lots of heavy deadlifts and squats and stuff, and other sort of strenuous exercises, is imagine as I said using that sort of like sponge analogy. It's almost like um, whereas normally it's like filled up with fluid because it's like squeezed the fluid comes out of it and as a result it can cause like your <laughs> the actual bones of your spine yeah, to touch, sometimes to, to grind rub. and yeah. it can also cause issue with your nerves because obviously mm. your spine is your nervous system oh it's making me back that's, feel that's funny that's why that's why if say you broke your lower back unfortunately people can end up mm. paralyzed from the waist down because mm. it's not it's not the spine itself it's the nerves mm. it's your nervous system so um you can get like shooting pains and all sorts of weird stuff if you if you uh, it's called dehydrating. So mm. you, if you you can ha- end up with dehydrated discs, the good thing about that is over time, it's um I say easy. It's it's not it's not one of those things that's going to heal overnight. It will take about six months to a year, but your 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 discs can actually. Free. fill up with fluid again mm. all you need to be is not stupid enough to just carry on doing what you was causing it in the first place because uh, obviously you yeah. are just going to cause continued deterioration yeah. to the mm. point where you will cause serious mm. damage to the point where you might not be able to ever recover from it but if you start having these issues and you know you go get yourself checked out maybe have an MRI or something it's very easy for um, a radiographer um, um, you know to, to, to see if what the condition of your discs are and stuff like that and then they'll they'll tell you if you've got dehydrated discs, then you can just rehabilitate it with very gentle exercises, like as you were saying, dead hangs and things like that will actually encourage them getting better mm. rather than making them worse, like heavy squats and deadlifts. Um, and give yourself a little bit of time, and you'll be the same as you were before mm. again. You know, I found it really interesting. I didn't know it before about um, like fusion of bones that happens in mm. men in males at like mm. the lower part of your back like the base of your back like apparently it's very common in in males and um it you the bones will actually fuse together what in your lower spine in your lower spine in the lower part of your back yeah um there was this guy who was talking about it and he was talking about the benefits of like yin yoga but like um because yin yoga is basically like where you would do these kind of uh, it's not anything where you have movement Mm. it's where you apply pressure but where you apply pressure to your joints like being pushed together Mm. and normally in any exercise if there's movement um that's involved with that they're like stay away from that because you'll cause damage but over prolonged periods if you just hold it in that position Mm. where that pressure which you'd never want to do in exercise it can have like massive benefits to your circuitry system and everything Mm -hmm. and he was saying that there's a that you know so you do all these spine ones where you kind of go on your front and then like really stretch out your spine he says that's so good for the lower part of your back Mm. because yeah in men they can fuse together the actual bones i I, I was like that's crazy I i didn't know that about fusing i know that obviously mm. as you grow up so like a, a baby has like 
twice as many bones as like an adult. Whoa, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, I can't remember the exact number. Would you be able to look it up for me, please, young Bullwinkle slash Stitches? Yeah, so basically, when you're born as a baby, you have loads of little bones, mm. right? And then as you develop into an adult, your bones, a lot of your bones fuse together so that by the time you're fully grown, you have about half as many bones as you do when you were born as a baby. Mm. Babies have loads of tiny bones. Mm. Adults have not so many big bones. Essentially. I always find it crazy on the babies as well. At the top of the head, you've got that area that's open. Yes. And it's really like weird. an egg like a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. And like, because the, b- the bone hasn't fused together on the top of the and head. And one of the best ways to tell if your mm. baby is dehydrated, because also you never want your child to be de- dehydrated, is if, if your child is slightly dehydrated, you can see the dip. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my oh. god. So you, yeah, you, you see don't, the whole dip. You don't in the top ever of the want head. to be able to see the dip. Ah, because obviously nice if there's enough juice. if there's enough fluid, <laughs> you won't be able to tell it. You'll be able yeah, to feel it. Yeah. You won't be able to see it. <laughs> but oh. if you're, that's why you have to be careful. So like if your if your baby gets like a sickness bug and it has like diarrhea or mm. and it can't keep fi- like water down, you have to be really, really careful. If you if it gets yeah. too much of a dip, then it's a real big warning sign. Yeah. And then it's when you need to start thinking about, you know, rehydration sachets or in serious rehydration sachets <laughs> or in serious cases, you know, they need to go in the hospital and have an IV. Yeah. Just to get that fluid in the system. You know? So a baby's body has about 300 bones at birth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like you say, these eventually fuse slash grow together mm-hmm. to form the 206 bones that adults have. So Whoa. you lose... So they got 100 um, yeah, you more have, than us, mm, pretty much. Crazy, Just under 100, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I knew mad, that, but, but I didn't know what you were saying. Mm. Um, I do think, though, like, things like yoga are so worthwhile doing mm. I just think you know because essentially what you're doing is you're taking your body through every single possible range of motion in a controlled and gentle way mm. um, and that's only gonna one, a lot of the issues that we have whether it's in terms of like um, you know we were talking about earlier about almost like physical deformities with like the Chinese ladies feet and with African ladies necks mm. and Mayan skulls um it can, you know, one of the reasons we have of like mild deformity in the West is like, say, people that live like sit in desk jobs all day long, they can end up with like curved spikes. So you know, you end up with like, that weird. I think this is part posture. of the uh, part of the fusion you know, thing. You should, it's because of desks yeah. and stuff. You, you know, you should almost like naturally. The best, healthiest way is almost to think like think like big chest. So it's almost like mm. your shoulders should be quite back naturally. Your shoulder blades should be back, and your chest should be. Uh, what you have of people that work at desks a lot and I, I know a couple of people that literally look like this and they'll openly admit it hunchback uh, um, yeah well sort of like a minor hunchback I guess yeah but they've developed this posture yeah. and now this is their, their normal posture whereas a normal posture as a, as a human being should be straight. like this nice and straight posture. your shoulder blades should be retracted hmm. and your chest should be pronounced not like hmm. this you know hmm should be like that yeah stick that chest out be proud yeah stick your boobies <laughs> yeah, out to the straight. world guys stick your boobies out to the world mm-hmm. um but i do want to quickly just like say because i know i said earlier on about um you know if you've got some damage to your discs um you know not to do like you know heavy deadlifts and squats for a, a while i do just want to quickly say though that doesn't mean that i i um don't think that if you're a healthy person you shouldn't do deadlifts and squats i'm talking about it's it's very it's people that push deadlifts and squats to the very extreme that I'll end up with issues like this. And mm. even then, usually if you are smart and you figure out the symptoms early and you can go and get it diagnosed, mm. you can realise it and then you can take a step back, you know, mm. use your noggin, listen to what the doctor says and you can recover. Mm. For the average person, doing squats and deadlifts will do you far more good than bad. Not only will it promote good posture for you, but it'll increase your overall body strength like phenomenally and as with what we were saying about these studies that I've been reading recently, one of the reasons why you know you can you can reduce all cause mortality rates and become a healthier, fitter person in general is just by being stronger. Mm. Might, we might take it for granted now, us three, because you're 18, I'm 32, you're 31, mm. and we're all like relatively healthy. None of us are obese, anything like that. Um, but even mm. things like um, getting up off a chair. Mm. If 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 you're like a little old man mm. who hasn't done any physical activity for sixty years, just getting up off a chair can be difficult. If you've got really strong legs and back, it's going to be easier and I strong think... arms to push yourself up. Mm. Walking up a steep set of stairs, you need leg strength to do that. Totally. So doing things like squats on a regular basis, even if they're just body weight squats, mm. will inc- you know will make you a lot stronger. And they, as I said, it's good for your posture as well because apart from anything else, it's keeping you limber. In that whole range of motion from being stood up in a normal stood up posture all the way to squatting all the way down, mm. you know, ass to grass as they call it. Mm. And it kil- keeps you your body comfortable being in that range of motion. Um, I do like some strength and conditioning on the side as well as um, like all of the, the like this stuff we do on Pandora's box and, and um, everything else. And um, 
like my the number one issue I see with people when I get them to start squatting isn't how much they can squat because that isn't even an issue. That's not even really like a big problem. What someone can squat initially when they first come and train with me isn't like like relevant. It's not yeah. relevant to mm-hmm. me really. It does because that's that's the thing that's easy to improve on. The thing that I find most limiting with a lot of people is that they physically can't even like get down to a decent squat position. Mm. You know, so it's mm. almost like trying to drive a car without a steering wheel or something. It's like you know, it doesn't matter how big the engine in the car is. You just need a, like a steering wheel, say, to get going. And if you haven't got that, you need to get to the point where you, know, you can drive that car. Start mm. with the posture, yeah. Gorilla you know? pose. Mm. So usually it requires about a month or two of like specific mobility work. to the, And then and it's almost like, then you can start the training with the squats. Mm. So, you know, so it's like, but squatting on a regular basis will obviously stop you from ever even needing to get to that point mm. where you will then actually mm. need to do like a load of mobility work just to squat because if you squat all the time it's like me i'm a big bloke and that but because i've just squatted regularly all the time since i left school i have no problem squatting i can i can go in the lotus position fine mm. you know i just i could i could sit down f- fully squatted and i feel quite comfortable there with my hands off the ground mm. for mm. like ages you know? i've got such tight hamstrings yeah that's another uh, thing which is another that's thing another thing from sitting down hands. in chairs yeah because when you sit at a 90 degree angle, your your hamstrings are like tensed, essentially. Mm. You think of like a bicep. Your hamstrings are very similar to like a bicep in terms of like your hamstring curls your leg back, mm-hmm. right? Um, so like the quads almost have the same function as your tricep and the hamstrings have the same function as your bicep. Um, and when you're sitting in this angle time, imagine if your like biceps are tense like this all the time, mm. it ends up really, really, really tight. Mm. But so then what happens then when you want to be like out. this yeah. and you want to stretch out? Yeah. Well, then it feels horrible and it feels like almost like your bicep might tear. Yeah. that's yeah. It's because we sit in chairs all the time. Mm. You end up in this weird 90 degree angle and you can spend without realizing it because you're just busy, hard at work doing whatever your job is. You can spend end up spending like half of the day like it mm. sometimes totally, probably more yeah mm. yeah and then and then you suddenly start trying to do some exercise or something and you realize what these ridiculously tight hamstrings because your hamstrings heartening as well it, the default position of your hamstrings should be how you are stood up and then mm. they are in a neutral position they're not mm. overly stretched and they're not overly contracted mm. you know you can't if you go from an overly contracted oh, see, I position think of them as stretched but they're not so when they when you're up no, straight they're, they're neutral yeah um, yeah mm. so when you if you were saying going to do like what's known as like a romanian deadlift or a stig- stiff legged deadlift where you keep your legs relatively straight but then bend over at your torso mm-hmm that's under gonna, load that's that'll stretch, stretch them, them out mm. but to people that have tight hamstrings that feels really yeah, uncomfortable yeah really uncomfortable and you'd probably want to work on your mobility mm. before you started doing anything like that with any serious load mm. any serious because i see it with like yoga even just like standing up straight mm. but keeping my legs straight and then bending my body over to like touch my toes mm. i cannot do that at all i've got to bend my knees like something chronic just to be able to put yeah. my fit hands to the floor and it's know? funny because if you looked at both of us i spent most like 90 percent of people would probably think see, oh, he's, he's more limber that, you, that yeah skinny you, one's you'd more be limber. fine it easy and i wouldn't mm, but it's but because no. but you could you can probably bend over and and keep your legs straight can't and you? more like, i can yeah. put my knuckles on the floor mm, stood mm. up with my legs completely straight and it's mm. just because i've yeah all this i do stuff on a regular basis that keeps my hamstrings loose mm. you know and i think what you always say as well like um it was a misconception of me with with uh training and stuff like where i go to the gym and i do back and then i do arms and then i do mm. legs a different day and stuff like actual doing things and doing movements that that target your whole body or as mm-hmm. many mm-hmm. as many muscles as possible is way better than, for you yep. than just targeting like like specific muscles like constantly a hundred percent what you see mm. with most people especially young lads is what they go in and they do what's known as sort of like bro splits in the gym so the idea is is that you would do like chest mm. on monday and yeah. then you would do like back yeah, on tuesday and to be honest that's just really like an inefficient way of working out that's good for a very very small percentage of the population and, and unfortunately that's a small pop percentage of the population that tend to be in the magazines and that's the that's the stuff that the young lads buy but there's no disclaimer or advice actually in the magazines that say you shouldn't work out like this and that's the ask like that you see like the big jacked bodybuilders and it's sort of like a very very almost like overly simplistic but natural way of thinking where like as a human being especially like you can imagine like a young 17 year old lad you buy like a bodybuilding magazine you look at like some you know whoever's mr olympia or like the rock or something's in it or like a, an article from Arnold Schwarzenegger from when he was like 30. And it's like, right, so Arnold Schwarzenegger did this. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to look like them. But that's like, that's that's not like the, the case at all. And what you're not seeing is, what you should be thinking is, how did they train to get to the point 
where they were training like that. Mm. So mm. the bigger and stronger and more muscular you get, the more you have to train in a specific fashion. So if you if you your chest is massive, if you have to if you have a freaking fifty inch chest, mm. then your chest is so massive you need to give it a hell of a lot of work to work it out the same way that a 17 year old lad with like a flat chest hmm. would have to work his chest for the same amount of stimulus if that yeah, makes sense yeah so for most for the majority of the population um what you would what would be far more beneficial than doing like chest day back day leg day arm day would be doing like three or four full body workouts a week spread out where you did everything Mm. did everything and you can decide whether you do it in straight sets or whether you do it in giant sets giant sets is say like taking four exercises and almost doing it like a circuit mm. or you can do it like super sets so you could pair like a chest and the back exercise um and then do like a leg and like a shoulder exercise or something so you know for example the best way to work out is say you did like monday ch- monday wednesday friday you could do like some sort of chest exercise whether it was push-ups parallel bar dips bench press of some kind do like four sets of that do four sets of some sort of back movement as i said up to you whether you where it's pull-ups dumbbell rows barbell rows whatever lat pull downs do like four or five sets of like you know squats i will mm. always say, say squats because that's just like the best lower body exercise squats and then three you know three or four of like some shoulder exercise lateral raises or overhead um barbell or dumbbell press um, some stuff on top of that if you want to just like some curls or some tricep work and then something usually that will get like your heart rate going um, so then like you know some kettlebell swings do like 100 kettlebell swings mm. or something like that at the end just for, just Full for body workout just, baby just for general <laughs> fitness but still developing that strength um, but getting some good cardiovascular work in as well some good conditioning um, and also um, something like a kettlebell swing really works on what's called your hip hinge just keeps your whole hips healthy and almost like what i would what i would call in like a tongue-in-cheek fashion like your humping the mm. humping motions mm. do you know what i mean if you think about you like a, nice a, 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 yeah you want your humping <laughs> motion strong you want you don't want to have a feeble hump you want to have a powerful hump <laughs> yeah you know you don't want to be known for your feeble humping <laughs> you know so obviously when you do like a kettlebell swing you put the weight in between your leg and then you swing it and then you're contracting your um your like hips your your and pushing them through and almost like yeah in like a joke way and like almost like a humping mm. a humping motion mm. so that'll strengthen up that'll strengthen up your glutes your, your lower back your hamstrings and that whole hip hinge will become really strong and it's really important to have a strong hip hinge mm. yeah again as we were saying if you're like an elderly elderly person and you have a weak hip hinge you've got a weak lower back and, and glutes and, and hamstrings and stuff you're gonna break your hip yeah you're gonna find it hard to get up from your couch mm. Mm. you know mm. where you know you don't want to be like that you want to s- have a spring in your step mm. you want to J- bounce off that couch yeah, you jump up b- bounce right off that couch <laughs> oh yeah and we're going to listen to a song now I picked this one because um, as I said earlier on in the show we watched um, Highlander on Saturday uh, uh, to celebrate my 32nd birthday and me and um, Crochet Mr. Drew Armstrong over here we're loving it along with our friends who swore the gold um, this is Who Wants to Live Forever by Queen so guys get your tissues ready not like that because mm-hmm. um, it's emotional <laughs> you dirty beggars um, and yeah feel at one with yourselves it's time to uh, have a little quiet moment in the corner Oh, shed a tear lovely think about somebody that you love no you love how long do you reckon a, a dolphin can hold its breath underwater then about an hour I reckon a couple of weeks <laughs> no you pillock Eight to ten minutes. Oh. oh, not as long as I thought. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I reckon a couple, eight of weeks. To, couple of weeks. Eight probably. to ten minutes. <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? That's not very long. That's no. not very long. To be fair, mate, I shouldn't have called you a pillow. That's, un- <laughs> that's, that's mean. There are stuff that I would be so ignorant about that you would know about. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, you pillow. <laughs> uh, I, I, w- I would have expected it to be a lot longer than that. I'd say really? at least like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I would have thought it would... I would yeah, you I, said an hour. I thought so about an hour. Like, yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Look up how long sperm whales can hold mm. a breath for. Because they, they die Surely so... Surely it depends on, on the dolphin. I reckon whales... Yeah, I reckon... Proper... I reckon sperm whales would be a lot longer. For a start, they've got a lot bigger lungs. Uh, and also, they dive a lot deeper. A couple of weeks. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I reckon with them, it might be like closer to an hour. 90 minutes 90 see an hour and a half whoa that's cool almost a week did you just say almost a week that was brilliant (laughs) 90 minutes see almost a week (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> not far off. Not far off. What about uh, let's go about a um, what about a leopard? <laughs> <laughs> How long can a leopard hold its breath? <laughs> what about a leopard? No, um, uh, what 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 are the um you know the um the mass the blue is it a blue whale? Blue whale, yeah, largest creature that ever mm. lived that we know of. Ooh. Although <laughs> that's a, exactly exactly that is a blue whale. Is there a blue whale in the studio? Oh, um, so a blue whale is shorter. It's sixty minutes. Do you know why I reckon that um, is? Just purely because sperm whales have adapted to dive really deep, and if you mm. think about it, it will take a long time just to get to those real de- mm. like low depths. So you don't want to get to the point where, like, oh, do you know what? Actually, I'm starting to get a little bit out of breath. Mm. Or that if it takes you freaking 15 minutes just to get back to the surface, mm. by that point you could have fucking died, couldn't you? Yeah. What about a fish? <laughs> <laughs> what about a killer whale then? What do you reckon a killer whale? Killer whale. Uh, I reckon a bit more than a dolphin, but obviously not as long as a whale. Oh well, 20 minutes. they are wet. Twenty but, minutes. No, I reckon twenty-five minutes. Fifteen minutes. Oh, oh, oh you were closer. Oh, You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Pillar>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the clever one now, mate? Eh? Hey. <laughs> Ball Winkles pulled, pulled it back. Yeah, a couple back. of weeks wasn't so silly Ball now, Winkle. was it? Back of the net, mate. Back of the net. <laughs> Ball Winkles done the pull, Winkle. <laughs> Bull on the pull. <laughs> Oh, we got a bull on the pool here. <laughs> <laughs> we got a fucking bull on the pool right here, mate. It's fucking four down over time. He's pulled it back. <laughs> oh man, uh, I can't think of any other whales now. So that's that's the end of that game. Yeah, any any others would almost be like just overly trivial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a one min- too many questions. A minky whale. Mm. I want to know how long a minky whale can hold its work. <laughs> what, um, didn't, didn't for some reason that just reminded me. Do you remember once my old man went on a weird tirade about like a minky whale had mated with like a <laughs> like some other type of whale? And the, what even was <laughs> that about? I can't some, remember. That was on one of the old shows, isn't it? You know, he just like sometimes says something fucking weird, doesn't even make sense. My old man just went on this weird tirade about if like a minky whale had sex with like a sperm whale. Oh yeah, and then he was like, and then it'd be like a minky pinky, um, a minky <laughs> oh, pinky yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I was, We were just like, what the fuck are you on about? Pinky. What is a minky pat? <laughs> <laughs> what is a minky pinky sperm? <laughs> <laughs> there's a type of whale just called a minky whale, like M I N K E, mm. and then there's obviously a sperm whale. And I think for some reason, my old man just just went on some weird tangent about it. Didn't nice. even didn't, literally didn't make any sense, mate. Nice. Didn't make any sense. What? Let's get it on. Sorry, man. What would you say is your favourite time of day? Night time. Like a minute. A minute? What, I have to go to... Like, like an hour. 11 minutes like, like an to hour. 10. Like what, what, what is your favourite point in the day? Oh, that's too hard, man. Mm-hmm. That's too hard. It's too hard. Too I hard. like Dinner a, time. That's what she said. <laughs> I like <laughs> a, a 10 o'clock what, morning. In oh, 10 in the morning. My like start of the day, you know, you've got a whole day ahead of you. you the day is things. dawning. Exciting. My name is Morning's here. <laughs> Morning is here. <laughs> Darkness Everything is clear. Is lovely. <laughs> you know that? Have you seen that on Friends? I like that episode. Where there's the there's a black dude and he's just in the oh yeah uh, yeah in in the in the um, apartment opposite and he just Good wakes morning. up every yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. morning's <laughs> here morning is here oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, like, and Joey loves him doesn't yeah. he yeah. Joey but, loves like, him Rachel hates it and she yeah, swaps yeah. rooms with Joey yeah, for some yeah. reason yeah. she wakes up she's like oh my god and Joey's like what the morning guy I love that guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> morning's here morning is here sunshine is near. Yeah. <laughs> Darkness is clear. Morning's here. Who does want to live forever? Would you guys want to live forever? No. I want to live no, forever. Nah. Forever. Well, I think it's we a do, long but time. In a, in, not in not in our bodies. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like Yoda, like Master our Yoda. To live on. Like yes. Obi Wan Kenobi or Yoda, that sort of way. If mm. you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you could yes. possibly imagine. <laughs> and then just like live on in some weird, cool sort of like, like my ideas spirit to live on. guru mm. way. Speaking of ideas, I um, I've got a new little hobby that I've been doing. Oh yeah, what's that? Other than walking around on all fours. Uh, so yeah, I, I, my two things are now are just crawling around the floor um, yeah. and playing this new game. Well, so new I want to put people onto it. So the game is called Wordle. Have you heard of it? I have not. Wordle. Um, Wordle. 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 I don't know how <laughs> behind I am on the curve of this. 
Mm. Um, I don't know if it's been popular for a little while, but I just saw it on TikTok and I was like, I'm going to give that a go. Rules. It's basically just a little game. You guess a five letter word. You've got six goes to guess this five letter word. If you get a letter in the correct place, then it goes green. And if the letters are in the word, but not in the correct place, it goes orange. Mm. And it's actually a lot more fun than it sounds. I reckon I'd enjoy that. It is really good. It, yeah. Played it yesterday. Mm. Uh, the word was null or null. I oh, yeah. K N O L L. Which isn't like the word. Sorry, say that again. K N O L L. L L. Yeah. Like a like a like, like a null. Like Brent Brent null. null. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like a hill sort of thing. You wouldn't you wouldn't think of that, would you? I wouldn't but know no. how to you spell just do it based off based <laughs> off the letters. <laughs> spell that on it. <laughs> but yeah, real fun game. Yeah. I like it. Can we play it on air? <laughs> yeah, we could do. Yeah. Should Is we it quite on? an easy one to it's, uh, I don't know, it's it's quite hard mm. purely Maybe. because of the fact that as soon as you start playing it, every word that you have ever known leaves Goes your like brain. Your yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Don't even know your own name anymore. Now, where am I? What even are we sat at? You know what I mean? What's we could maybe, going on? Yeah, I don't, if maybe we could next week. Yeah, we yeah, could let's play, get that we could start, start it at the feature. start of the show. Cool, yeah, and fun. then try and play it throughout. Yeah, interactive. Mm. Absolutely, interactive feature. While you guys are um, thinking about that, I'm going to say, do you know what? A couple of weeks ago, I said I was going to do a philosophical quote from now on, every single show. Mm. And then literally, last week... Brain fart. F- <laughs> first show after. It wasn't even a brain fart, we just ran out of time. Yeah, we literally yeah. just ran out of time. I, I couldn't send a philosophical quote. So I'm going to give you guys two this week, right, oh. to make up for it. And I'm going to carry on doing one every week. This, sure is the, this, is, this is one that I always really liked. And it resonated with me because I think it's always been important to me to at least attempt to try and better myself in every way, not in just one way so this is the society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting done by fools and i just thought that is a great quote and i really agree with that you do not want your thinking to be done by cowards and you don't want your fighting to be done by fools do you Mm. you want you want you want your thinkers to be honest strong people with strength comes like dignity and pride and stuff like that, and you don't want your, you don't want your um your warriors to essentially be a bunch of dumb henchmen, mm. do you? No. Totally. Oh, we're just gonna kill this Need village. Need a little balance. We're gonna just kill this village of people now because we got told to. Mm. No, you don't want mm. to be like that, do you? Mm. No. You want it to be like you know rational thinkers, logical thinkers. You know, um, I think that's a good way to go by. Try and improve yourself physically and mentally because it's all linked. You know? Oh, yeah. Yes. Physically, mentally, spiritually, it all interacts. You know, if your body's really out of whack, your mind will probably be a bit out of mm. whack too, and vice versa. You know, so try and, you know, read a book, have a workout, listen to some music that teaches mm. you something, or read some poetry, or read some philosophy. You know, balance yourself. If you're interested Absolutely. in something, find out more about it. Mm. Make yourself a more well rounded human being. You know, um, of course, none of us will ever be perfect, but we can always strive to be the best us that we can be. You know? mm. The best us we can be. I should like that. That be your I quote. like that a lot. Should like it. Huh? should be your quote. Oh, thanks, mate. Mm-hmm. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Steve. So let's, let's give you guys another one. Let's give you guys another one, because I missed that on the last one. All so. this thinking. All mm-hmm. this thinking, I know. You're blowing I know. my mind. I, I've saved so many. It's, uh, I like this one, um, because I understand that it's not easy for everybody to be optimistic i think you know some people naturally suffer from anxiety and are more prone to things like depression than other people so i'm sympathetic that it's not um it's not as easy for some people to be positive as it is for others that said we can always strive to be as positive as we can be because there's a broad spectrum Uh, i like this quote a pessimist will always see the difficulty in every opportunity whereas an optimist will always see the op the opportunity in every difficulty Oh, I, I like that a lot. I really, Ooh. I really like that one. I think that's just, mm. <clears throat> and I, I think we all probably, whether it's from work or whether it's from your personal life, we all know people that fall into both of those categories. Mm-hmm. I know some people. It's almost like I could say the most, what in my opinion was the most like overwhelmingly good news, and they'll somehow have this like somehow spin on it mm. that almost like baffles me in terms of like how they've managed to almost like take some sort of negative from it, mm. and I'm like, what? Mm. And you also were around some people that <clears throat> just don't ever see almost like a problem in anything. Yeah. You know, and it's I, it's nice to be around people like that, you know? Because mm-hmm. let's face it, like, there are times when life's going to be hard anyway, regardless of your viewpoint. Mm-hmm. We all have struggles. There are all times that you're like, something happens. You know, let's face it, cars break down. Relationships sometimes go tits up. 
you know, sometimes you just fall flat on your ass physically. You've got to find the funny side. Physically, mm. mentally, or emotionally. Mm. Yeah, but it's an uh, outlook. Yeah. You know? Mm. you know, it's not about, yeah. you know, you're not a loser for getting knocked down. You know, mm. you're a loser if you choose not to get up again. You know, it's mm. that whole sort of mentality, you know? Because we all get knocked down. You mm. know, but you just got to get back up, get on that horse, and ride that sun out of town. Oh, yeah. I like that, man. I like that a lot. Yeah, baby. So, um, have you got a question for us this week, young man? A question? Young I will stitches. think of a question. You don't have I to think, think about it. Do you want me to go on to talking about Attila the Hun? Yes. I wanted, I wanted to talk about Attila the yes. Hun for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Only because we've talked about um, several other historical figures. We talked about Genghis Khan. Um, I've talked a little bit about um, Hannibal of Carthage mm. and stuff, and that always goes pretty well. So the I thought, White Death. We spoke a little bit about. The White Death. Oh, yeah, that Finnish sniper. Senior hey ha. Senior hey ha. That finished sniper, yeah, so I thought we'd talk a little bit about Attila the Hun, because um, I think everybody knows, as everyone's heard of Attila the Hun, um, but not many people know much about him. No, I don't know I don't know anything. No. So he was born in 406 AD, so uh, quite a, a, a fair bit before um, Genghis Khan, mm. about, about 600 years before Genghis Khan, and he was, he was born um, in sort of like mid-Asia, mm. but rather than... Like, what Genghis Khan did was he sort of, for the most part, developed his territories east and pushed into, like, China and tried to invade it, um, Japan and stuff like that. Attila the Hun did the opposite. Mm. He sort of pushed his empire west and ended up going as far as he conquered and had parts of his empire in, like, Italy, Spain... Greece. So right. he went from like Central Asia and then conquered parts. Um, oh. He also, because of the time he lived in, so and about sort of like 400 to sort of 500 AD, that was um, the Roman Empire as we knew, as we know it now was sort of starting, or like what we would think of as like the heyday of the Roman Empire, it was starting to sort of fall into decline. So it was around sort of around about 500 AD that most of the Romans, say, pulled out of, of Britain, for example. And also by this point in history, you had the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire sort of crumbled quicker than the Eastern Roman okay. Empire. And the Eastern Roman Empire um, became known as Byzantium. Um, and the capital of that was Monday, well, Modern day Istanbul. It was what's right. known as Constantinople. It was Constantinople when it was owned by the, the Byzantines. But I think it's important to say the Byzantines pretty much just saw themselves as Romans. But we know them now, almost like to make it easier to, to, to know exactly specifically who we're talking about. And we call them about we call them the Byzantines. And we call that sort of region Byzantium. So um, he ha Attila the Hun had a lot of run-ins with um, the Byzantines, and I think it's one of the things that's like fair to you know to, to give his sort of credit to to um, Attila the Hun to give credit to him was that um, the like the the Romans like the Eastern Roman Empire they were like pretty damn scared of Attila the Hun. Right. So like he used to um, he used to like raid Roman settlements and Roman towns and stuff. Um, and whereas I feel like in the heyday of like the Roman army. It was almost like if you'd almost like dared did that, it would almost be like dared to do that. It would almost be like a death sentence mm. for the most part. Whereas like he did it like, you know, he would he would almost like make a point. He wanted everyone to know it was him. He did it. He there wasn't really any repercussions for it because they were more scared of him than he was of them. Wow, that's crazy. Ooh. Yeah. The Romans yeah. were like that. So his his um he was the ruler of the Huns mm. as in Tilo the Huns. A bit funny in in modern life. Yeah, when you because think when, you, when you think of like you okay mm. Hun, oh, for okay. example, yeah, which yeah, is a show yeah. on Astronomic Radio, which is a mm. Hun of a different kind. Mm. So nowadays you think Attila the Hun, we think of him. He's like you know he was a ruler of this tribe mm. called the Huns, which mm. would be like mm. warrior barbarians. Why have, why have Huns them... nowadays are like hey Hun? Yeah, why have, <laughs> why, why did Germans get the nickname of Huns? Because of um, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, ah, and they okay. are called Huns. But I do ah, think the name okay. Hungary comes from the Huns. Really? I'm not actually 100 percent sure, but I think I think that is the case. 100 percent sure. I'm <laughs> not a Hun. Druid percent sure, but um, I reckon it, I think that most likely, and as I said, th I th this is me just almost putting two and two together. So I might be wrong. I think that most likely what happened was there were some Huns that settled in that region. And it became known as like Hungary, which probably mm. much means something like Land of the Huns. Mm. And then it became known as obviously there was the Austro like Hungary. Yes. It was mm. like Northman's land. Mm. It was known as sort of like, you know, the land you know, that's where the Northmen lived. And then it just became known as Normandy in, in France. Mm. And the stupid observation there, my friend. Um that makes the most sense. Usually the 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 option that makes the most sense 
yeah. is, is the right one. Yeah. Usually, you just need yeah. to sort of figure out, out the code, if that makes mm. sense. It says here that Hungary uh, just comes from Latin. Right, but what's the name? But where, where? But what does it mean? What does it mean? The Latin name Stitches. itself derives from the ethnonyms Hungary, yeah. Ungary, and Ugri for yeah. the steppe people. The steppe people, that yeah. Conquered the land today known as Hungary in the 9th and 10th centuries. 9th and 10th centuries. Hmm. Okay, so maybe it didn't. Maybe steppe I don't know. People. They still could have been the Huns. I'm not sure. Mm. They would have come from the steppes, I think. Mm. I think until the Hun, you know, the, the Hun people did come from the, the steppes. Steps, yeah. Mm. Whether it's like the same people, I'm not. I I don't. To be honest, I just don't know enough to say yay or nay. So we'll have to come back to that another time. Attila the Hun always reminded me. <laughs> this mm. Sounds so dumb. Always reminded me of Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> 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 Why? Because of the name Attila the Hun, mm. Jabba ja- the Hutt. Oh, Jabba the Hutt, Attila the Hun. Yeah, I see. I can see. I can see that. To yeah, be fair. I can almost see like that. a lead ruler. I did. Well. I, I was like wondering what you were getting at. I was like, what was there like some characteristic that about him? What like he was like he he apparently he looked like a massive slug. <laughs> or something like that. He had a, he had a sail. He had a really nice sail barge. He sometimes would sacrifice people to the great pit, pit of Sarlacc or whatever. Mm. You know that's mm. that's why. That's why. But yeah, so Attila he was born in 406 AD. He used to often make ra- raids on Byzantium. He even got to the point in the end where the Eastern Roman Empire would just pay would pay him gold just to not raid them anymore. Oh. Th- that's how scared they were of him. Whoa. And one thing that's there's, there are some some real parallels between Attila and and um, Genghis Khan. So, for example, um, they were both horse lords. So, in both Mongolian culture and in Hunnish culture. Um, horses were like sacred mm. and beings. coming from the steppe I guess that is yeah. the, the case you know yeah and they all of their warfare was conducted on horseback so mm. they were like masters of cavalry and horseback warfare with both sword and bow in that respect obviously yet again just the same as the Mongols mm. um, and it was almost like symbolic and almost like um, sacred to them that they would um, have all of their negotiations and stuff on horseback and I think what was almost like a real turning point in almost like the power shift between the Ro- uh, the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantines, and um, and the Huns was that when the the Byzantines wanted to negotiate with Attila, and Attila can see you know said like okay we'll we'll get together and we'll we'll negotiate basically because Attila knew that they were scared enough of him that they would probably just give him loads of gold and stuff save him the effort of raiding. When he did, it was it was it was um. Byzantine tradition, Roman tradition, that you would obviously like get off your horse and you would either stand face to face or you would go and sit at a table, much like we would today, to negotiate. But in their culture, it was like sacred to remain on horseback. Mm. And Attila was like, I'm not going to get off my horse. You're going to get back on your horse and mm. that's how we're going to negotiate. And they conceded. Mm. And that was almost mm. considered almost like a symbolic victory mm. yeah. for Attila and someone's like a turning because it's like they were playing by his rules mm. and it's not very often that like the Roman Empire even like a slightly faded Roman Empire would play by anybody else's rules mm, sure. especially because you've got to bear in mind that still at this point in history con- you know Rome might have been in decline a bit but Constantinople was still like w- was at the time by far the most impressive city on the planet mm. Constantinople was like an insane hub and because of its positioning on the map it, it was like almost like a great gateway to er- to everywhere it was sort of um it was on the coast, so it was great for trade. You know, ships could come in from all over, all over the world. Um, it was just, and it had like the most impressive buildings. It was just an amazing place. You know, it was a great sort of place. It, it linked up lots of other places. You know, it was almost like halfway between Europe and Asia, mm. almost like on the on the on the sort of um, the um, border of both. You know, so it was it was a great strategic region hub. Yeah, it was a great hub. You could get stuff coming in from Asia. You could get stuff coming in from Europe. Um, a really interesting place. Do you but, know um, how many people Attila the Hun killed? Um, a lot. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I got, I've got. An I don't answer. know exactly. I've got an answer here. I don't know uh, exactly. Obviously, from economic times, so who knows if it's right? Yeah. Uh, but it says an estimated three million civilians were massacred. Whoa, that is a lot of people. One interesting thing about him as well that a lot of people don't know was that he was actually brought up as like co-ruler. So in Hunnish culture, it was often it, it was often the way, and it seems weird to us because usually it's just the eldest will mm. rule. But in Hunnish culture, if say you you gave you had two sons, they would both co-rule. Oh, wow. so he co-ruled with his brother that was called Bleeder. Bleeder. So there was Bleeder the Hun and Attila the Hun. But most historians agree, and I think the proof is in the pudding itself that like. 
Attila did most of the most of the work, mm, right. and Bleeder was right. almost more like of a symbolic ruler. So Attila was the one that everyone was afraid of, um, and I think Bleeder died. If I'm right in, in thinking this, I think Bleeder died before Attila. And one of the reasons we know that he probably didn't do a lot was because like nothing changed. So, Whereas when Attila died, everything changed. Mm. Bleeder's reign lasted for eleven years until its death. While it has been spe- speculated by the Jordanes that Attila murdered him on a hunting trip, All right. it is unknown exactly how he died. Yeah. He died in a bit of like a, a, a strange way as well. Nobody knows exactly how he died. So um, he, yeah, he he conquered like loads of the West. As I said, he had like dominion over parts of Monday Spain, which is like you know right West Coast Europe, mm. all the way from him originally starting off in mid. Asia, which is a mad feat, isn't it? As I said it went as far as like Italy and Greece as well. Um, but um, after just like conquering and ruling and doing all loads of mad stuff, you know, messing up all the Romans' plans, the Byzantinian plans, getting ridiculously rich and just conquering pretty much anywhere he particularly wanted to conquer, um, he ended up marrying um, like a young, beautiful woman, and he got ridiculously drunk on his on his. Um, What's wedding his, night? Yeah, on his mm-hmm. wedding night. And he it's thought that he had a brain aneurysm and died. Ooh. But a lot of people speculate that maybe he didn't have a brain aneurysm and that his new bride was actually an assassin Ooh. and actually assassinated him. And as is the downfall of many a man, was sort of, you know, like it goes back to those old like Greek siren tales. It's almost mm. like, how like, you know, there are times in history where it's almost no matter how much of a great man you are, Sometimes a beautiful woman can be a man's downfall, mm. you know. Mm. And if you're a really cunning, you know, woman mm. like an assassin or something, then you can use that to your advantage. Even if you're this great, powerful warlord like Attila, get him ridiculously drunk to the point he's like fa- passed out, slip some poison in his mouth or something like that. Back in those days, mm. there would have been no ways checking for that. Mm. Do you mm. know what I mean? Oh, he mm. just died in his sleep. Ah, oh, do a little fake scream. He's gone. Mm-hmm. He's probably got me paid by the Byzantines or something, you know, mm. back in Constantinople. Probably like um, some somebody, some operation. Yeah, somebody probably like gave her a massive bag of gold or something mm. for it, you know. Yeah, but I don't know. It's, it's speculation. We don't know either way. Yes. Either either way. Um, I said Attila the Han, really impressive man. I said he was a horse lord. Um, came from mid Asia. Um, really just handed the, uh, the the Byzantines' asses to him a lot of the time. I said conquered right as far as uh, um, west as, as uh, the Spanish coast. One of the most... He's considered one of the greatest rulers in history, mm. right up there with, you know, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, um, Julius Caesar. Different people have different ideas on who the, the, the best, like, conqueror is of all time. At the end of the day, um, it's all in the eye of the beholder, really, isn't it? Yeah. It, it depends yeah. sort of what criteria you're using. Things like that, but How you he's it. definitely worth talking about. Anyway, let's let's put it like that. He's definitely worth talking about. I do yeah. have a question. Go on, if we have time. Yeah, we do. But, cool. but, 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 I just want to give a dramatic pause. Yeah, go on. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> so this week, my question: yeah. uh, I would consider myself a creative person. And yeah. I'm sure you both would as well. Um, would you rather mm-hmm. be famous or rich? Now, I will clarify what mm-hmm. I mean by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, rich will say you just get a hundred mil dropped into your pocket. However, none of that can be used towards your creative endeavours mm. uh, or to promote your creative endeavours. Mm. Uh, if you're famous, it's more of a thing of being like your creative stuff is well recognised. Like by the public, it's accepted. Like everyone why can I use that? Work. Why can't I use that money for creative endeavours? Uh, because that's the question. <laughs> oh right, oh, fair enough. But I could just, but I could just, I could still use it to just improve the quality of my life. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's more whether you take the money or you take your, you know, your creative. It could be your music. It could be anything that you go for is accepted and and hailed. So I'm either, so I'm either, you know, as is often rare. Let's face it. You know, look at like Van Gogh and loads of other artists. So mm. you're either appreciated in your time yes. which is very rare for especially artists but a lot of creative people in general mm. Tesla being another example of a creative even though he was a scientist he was a creative man mm. wasn't he everything about him was creative making a legacy so either you're either appreciated in your time which is super rare but you are just not just like on whatever money you're on now yeah you're not or and also like obviously you don't make money from your creative endeavours that's another part Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or you're so you don't even have the ability to end up rich from your creative endeavors. No. Oh. no. Or you're rich, 
but you can't put them towards your creative endeavors. Could mm. I could I still end up potentially making it from my creative endeavors? No. So you can There's make no stuff, chance. but people aren't gonna like hail it and and appreciate it. In that, that after you're dead. No. I think even though I'm not even the sort of person that cares about becoming famous, I think I would actually go for the the, the fame one purely because I feel like that's almost like your legacy. I agree. Even if it's just your friends and family that remember you, mm. I'd want them to think I'd like it'd be quite nice for me to think that like say like my daughter's grandchildren mm. might hear stories of me and be like oh yeah you know great granddad cam was pretty cool he like lifted weights and he like made, did the, some, made the jimmy O'Malley did some stories. funny songs and <laughs> mm, mm, you know apparently yeah. he was a bit of like an interesting quirky guy even mm. if it's just like that you know mm. also had some wacky history yeah. facts and was just a bit of a strange fella i would take you know <laughs> i would take the the fame one purely because like you say it's just it's that legacy thing isn't it yeah. it's leaving something behind afterwards it's all good and well being like rich but if it's like for nothing then mm. do you know what i mean it's like you just mm. what's so you just eating like a really nice sandwich just in a really comfortable on your yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know why yeah. sandwich is first thing I say. <laughs> mm. just eating like a really really ridiculously nice sandwich <laughs> with like a lambo in your driveway and just like in a big mansion but it's like well you still obviously have your love it seems it seems shallow though doesn't it yeah it seems shallow money can't buy happiness oh mate you wise young man <laughs> yeah what yeah. do you do drew i i'd say the fame one as well yeah mm. yeah mm. Mm. Yes. yes. Yeah, I think it has to be, man. I think there'd be a lot of people that would take the money, you know? I think there would be as well. But mm. I do think that's just because, say, like, you know, if, if you're not a creative person at all, which is, like, fine, but if you're just the sort of person, you know, you like, you do your job well, regardless of whatever it might be, but it's not, like, a particularly, like, creative endeavour. It's not a creative job. But, you know, you, you, you're providing that service to society. You're doing it well. Then it's a no-brainer that you take the money. Mm. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because you haven't got any creative endeavour to develop anyway, or be known for. Still anyway. be known as like the best at whatever you did, though. Yeah, yeah, you know like I the mean? best IT guy. Like, yeah. I, I guess that. Yeah, that could be like the fame <laughs> version. You know what I mean? If you're just like, oh right, yeah. if you're just like working at Curry's or something, yeah. or any any random. <laughs> he got down in history <laughs> as the the <laughs> best worker as the <laughs> ever. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I think it's really important. The as best well, chicken like, man <laughs> to get the best rotisserie the best chicken, chicken guy, best delivery <laughs> boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that ever lived. <laughs> yeah, like I think it's important um, to actually like especially with creativity and stuff like mm. to be seen and to be appreciated by your peers mm. like that's an overwhelmingly good feeling oh, yeah you oh, know yeah. like like that's something that's just um so to think that you could be like seen and accepted by like mm. society and by mm. uh, people that are like really into uh, that are creative people as well that's like yeah. a massively cool thing to happen you know i, I had as, a big uh, sorry no no you go first man. i had a big thing recently where i was thinking would money make me happy because we went, we went up to Bath, right? And I was just walking around. We were just trying to buy stuff, mm. random stuff. I didn't want to buy anything. Mm. It's not like I didn't have the money to. I you just were just want enjoying to. being in Bath. And I was like, I think for me, what would make me happier in life is progression and development mm. rather than And I, I think also as well, like, not necessarily appreciation, but um, you know when like a like-minded person might e almost like realize why you've done something mm. Mm. or something or like they appreciate it the same way that you can you can tell that they appreciate it the same way that you appreciate it yeah there's that's something, a good feeling there's something mm. so heartwarming yeah. you get from that and, and that's it's not like, an ego driven it thing. makes it worth to you it or suddenly it makes everything it's worthwhile like, oh you see that as well yeah oh it's like whoa and like, I guess yeah. it's exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. there's More definitely than... a couple of people like, like that i have in my life um and some of them aren't even people i ever really even see physically do you know what I mean they're just people that are like are sort of like friends I don't because of like the way our lives are I don't really even get a chance to ever see them but it's just like you know when I talk to them about things and stuff whether it's like online or anything and we sort of I can tell that we're in sync like that it, I just it's, I just think it's amazing it's exciting. I love it yeah mm. yeah yeah I love Absolutely. it I said it almost just like it brightens up your day it makes everything in life f feel worthwhile and it just gives you this weird sense of fulfillment and everything mm. you know and it's, it's like a really really lovely feeling a lovely Definitely. feeling something quite sure. human about that isn't it yeah mm. obviously i think you know it's tempting for i mean let's face it you know money is a is a a big deal mm. let's face it you know so totally. i think it, it, you can see why it'd be tempting for a hell of a lot of people to um take the money you know and i had to l have a little think about it for a second but i think you know mm. for, for the sake of sort of like integrity and everything like that and and for what's really the bigger picture in life yeah and important. yeah, the, yeah. The, the bigger picture in like i think you would have to go for the for the other one. For sure.
It seems almost like shallow because it's the way you put it was almost like like fame. fame. Do you know what I mean? It, yes. makes, it makes you that's think of like, I, that's it makes you think of like walking it. down yeah. like a red carpet, like look yeah. at me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it, that obviously makes you instantly think of it like you know it's a bit like a vain douchey mm-hmm. endeavor. Mm-hmm. You know, like a bunch of people in Hollywood like preaching to the rest of the world about like you know climate crisis, and meanwhile mm-hmm. they're like going on jet private jets around the world every day. Like you yeah, know what I mean, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. You know, mm-hmm. gives you that sort of image, but. <laughs> That's yeah. what I had to had yeah, to preface it's it. It's more before. like it's almost more just like appreciation mm. for who you are as a human mm. being, for sure, and the potential for that and appreciation to be taken as far as you can possibly get it. Mm. I think that's yeah, that one. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. That one. I think that's a nice place to finish the show. Anyway, nice, yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I that's that. that. I've been Obadiah Penny Whistle. He's been Crochet. I have been Crocheted. You've been Stitches. I've been Stitches. Thanks for tuning in. Join us again next week on Pandora's Box as we um, talk about a mo- another round of interesting facts Whatever's and in topics the box. and subjects. A plethora, you could say, mm. of topics. Um, check out Darkdale, Friday night, 8 until 10, if you like your rock and your metal and your grunge, etc., your prog. Check out um, Forest of Glebe on Sunday from 6 to late if you like your folk music and your acoustic stuff and your fantastical music and check out Rap Radar if you want to check out some rap and hip hop with Nathaniel from 8 until 10 on Sunday evening and remember to check out of your hotel and check out of your hotel don't Mm. make sure you don't forget to check out your hotel (laughs) and Drew going to be on all of those shows anyway pretty much so (laughs) you know you'll see him everywhere (laughs) cheers guys have a good week cheers we love you all this is Quiet by Smashing Pumpkins bye bye have a lovely evening (laughs) woohoo